I'm gonna show you how bleed actually works in Elden Ring. It's a little more complicated than you might realize. So you would think you have a bleed weapon and it, it does bleed. Well, if you've ever noticed, there's actually a passive effects listed on it that will tell you the blood loss buildup and then a number. Um, well, a friend of mine and me were testing this in duels, trying to figure this out, and we have finally hammered this down into an actual sort of formula-like thing. You don't really need a formula, though, because it's actually much more simple than you would think, although maybe at the same time a little more complicated than you would think. Now, whenever you get hit with a bleed, you might see something similar to this pop up at the bottom. This is actually a screenshot I'm popping up of the bleed bar. Well, let's start somewhere simple. So that bleed bar, you might not have realized this, but when you get bleed resistance in your armor, it actually just makes the bar bigger. It doesn't make that bleed scale different. It doesn't make you take less bleed. It literally just makes that bar become even larger on your screen. That is what bleed resistance will do. How big that bar is, is determined by your equipment and your robustness. So if you go to your status over at the bottom right, you'll see my robustness is 308. That is the only number you really need to keep track of. It is the 308. So to keep it simple, it's really not that complicated. So right now, again, my robustness is 308. What that means is I can take 308 points of blood loss buildup before I bleed. So when I go back to one of these bleed weapons, I do 84 every time I hit someone with this blood ant spur rapier. It'll do 84. If I swing again, it'll do another 84 and it'll do another 84 and it'll keep doing that until it hits that 308. And when it hits that 308, I suddenly take the bleed effect. Same thing for activating rot activating poison, frostbite, sleep, madness. It's just gonna be based off of your relevant immunity and then getting that number, hitting that number in collective, like collectively on the bar. That is all you're trying to do in order to activate it. But there are some nuances with it so that it actually is not quite that simple. First off, from our testing, what we realized is that the bleed is actually ticking down at all times. It doesn't matter if you're getting hit continuously or not. The bleed will tick down, and with our math, we were able to determine that it was seven points of bleed every second. So if someone's trying to hit you with that ant spur that I was showing, I might as well equip it at this point, um, it does 84. So in 10 seconds, 70 of that is gone. In 12 seconds, we are up to 84. So in this case, every 12 seconds, you lose one of the swings you got on someone of bleed. So if you hit someone and then kind of don't hit them again for 12 seconds, their bleed will now be reset back to zero. That's how fast that bleed goes away. So you might be wondering how we were able to confirm this. Well, there's actually a trick you can do. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but the way that we did this that was pretty conclusive was we opened up Microsoft Paint and I also took a video of all the different things being hit by them and then I would go into a video editor, and then I would zoom in the video editor, I would find the very first frame where the bar appeared, and then I would know that is how much bleed it added. As time went on, you can see a bleed tick down. If I go ahead through this, bleed goes down. This is also how I found out the bleed, which we'll get to in a second, how fast it goes down. So I'd find the first frame where it's like this. I would keep the zoom level the same, and I would take a screenshot of it. Then I would take it over to Microsoft Paint and I would paste in the health bar and crop it out of the image and get uh, health bars for different items that have different bleed values and stuff like that. And so then once I have these values, there is some stuff we could do to confirm all these numbers. So first off, this bar was with me having 308. 308. Robustness. So this bar is 308 units long. And so assuming that, start off with just assuming what if, okay? And we would crunch some numbers and do some math. So we had, uh, for this example right up here, this was the uh, seppuku that had 57 bleed. And so then what we were able to do is say, okay, I could take a select tool and I could start from roughly the start of the bar to somewhere around where the bar is going to. Then at the bottom of the screen, you can't see it, 
on this preview because just the way it previews Windows, but it would tell me the pixels. It would say this selection is 136 pixels wide. Okay, so knowing that's 360 wide, or one not 360, it was 136, whatever I said. Yeah, like 136. Then what I would do is I would start on from the beginning and go to the end of the bar, which is about 800 pixels long. And then I could divide one by the other to see what the math was, what percentage, whatever. And so assuming this was 308 and you divide one by the other, then how many times does that go into 308? Well, it went into 308 around 50, you know, enough times to where it was, you know, the math lined up to where it was 57. So 57 plus 57 plus 57 plus 57 plus 57 plus 57 was roughly right around 308. So that was like the first way we were able to confirm yeah, the increased size of the bar really is just your robust, your increased robustness just being displayed to you like that. And I should have done this a second ago, but I decided to uh, go ahead and crop that, clean that up for you guys so it looks a little bit easier to look at. And so then we tried the same thing with a katana that had 69 um, blood loss buildup per swing. And as you can see, the difference between these two bars, it about made sense. 69 was just a little bit more than 57, and we saw that reflected in the bar. It all lined up. It was adding 69 points of bleed. So where this comes in handy to know is that when you have a weapon that swings slow, this bleed is always ticking down at all times. So for example, we had uh, the math didn't line up at first, so we took um, some fist weapons, and they took more swings than we thought. But then what we would do is we recorded the video, and we looked at the timestamp to see how long it was, and it was something like, you know, 10, 10 seconds or something, right? in order to um, go from the first hit all the way till the hit that causes bleed. And so then we were able to go, okay, well in 10 seconds you lose seven per whatever, so therefore you go this way, 70 units, and then it all line up to where, okay, we were able to double confirm that these numbers are in fact just how much space this goes on the bar with every single swing. It's also important to know that we also tested that swing type does not matter. If you do, let me get back to the game. If you do a heavy swing, so if I get out of here and I do a heavy attack, or if I just do a light quick attack, no matter what attack you do, the bleed buildup is literally identical. It does not matter if you're doing these. It does not matter if you're doing the full charge attacks. The bleed buildup will be exactly the same no matter what. It is actually just number of hits. We were able to confirm that with our testing. That was a pretty easy thing to confirm. Well, you might have been wondering what those other bars were that were on that paint. Well, that was us testing Seppuku. This is an ability, if you're not familiar, an Ash of War that gives you a temporary bleed buff on your weapon and a damage buff, 50% damage buff on your weapon. Uh, with this Ash of War on, you'll have 84 plus an additional number. So we set out to figure out how much blood loss buildup actually gets added when you use the Seppuku ability. So from our testing, if I pop that back up, from our testing, uh, this these bars on the top were the seppuku ones, and the ones on the bottom were the ones without seppuku for three different weapons. We had a katana, something else I forget, another weapon that had 57, and some other weapon that also had 69. I think it was Omen Cleaver or something like that. And these two lined up perfectly. We were wondering, maybe if it's a different weapon, it'll be different. It didn't matter. We had a katana, we had an Omen Cleaver. They both had 69. And you can tell the bars were pretty much identical. Okay, so that was ruled out. But the next thing we were trying to figure out is, was it an additive? Or was it some kind of weird multiplication to that it was adding on to this? And from our tests, we were able to see, you know, the distance between uh, this to that. So, like, if you if you parallel line that, you know, what's, what's the difference? And we did all the pixel measurements. We would zoom in and we would, you know, measure pixels at the most relevant spaces and stuff to try to figure it out and it looked like pretty much the seppuku just adds a flat value and from us measuring pixels so for example we know this bottom one is 57 so we would take this and say all right that's 136 pixels okay how many pixels is this this is 333 so 333 versus 137 so you take, I can't show you the math, 333 divided by 137, 2.43 times more bleed. So this is 2.43 times more pixels than the bottom one. So then I would take that 2.43 and I would multiply it against the 57 of the weapon that we know. We know this is 57. 
And we know this is 2.43 times bigger in size than this one. So then we just take this and we multiply it by 2.43. So you can visualize it, okay? And when we multiply that by 2.43, it gets us 138.54. But then in order to find out the difference, we have to take away. So we take that 57, we remove it from the number. And the number we came up with was 81, which we were like, okay, how about 81? So we did some further pixel tests because 81 is kind of a weird number, right? Uh, but what we found out was it was something to do with the visual. So this bar is not how you want it to be. The start and end points, we're not entirely sure. Like the visual is not always accurate to the code. So basically, if you take the uh, pixel measurement to the left side of this white part on the end, then it will be uh, um, either 82 or whatever whatever way it was. One of these, the short end was say for example, 82. And then if you took it from this one all the way to the long side, it was 78. And so we just took the average between those two and that was 80. So it just seemed probable that it's actually 80. It's just hard to tell when you look at one of these what is actually intended to be the end point on something like that. So again, if we took it to one side, it was too below 80 or above 80, and the other side was too above or below the opposite way. And so we just assume 80. Okay, so in our minds, 100% confirmed, Seppuku adds 80 extra bleed per swing. So in this case, the total amount for... This weapon with a seppuku was 138, maybe it was 837, I forget which way I did. I think it was 137, actually. 137. So, at 80 plus 57, we got 137 bleed, thanks to the seppuku. So that's how seppuku works. Uh, as far as we're concerned, completely confirmed now. That is 100% how that works. So that's how bleed works in PvP. We tested it in PvE as well, and... It pretty much worked exactly the same in PvE. There's only one difference in PvE. When you're stabbing at a monster or a boss in PvE, what happens is the first bleed is normal, just like in PvP. It just depends on the enemy's robustness, which varies enemies to enemy. And we also theorized it might be just based on their total health, which did seem to line up. But we can't confirm that yet because that would require quite a bit of additional testing across a wide spectrum of enemies. But what happens is after the first bleed, Normal PvE enemies build up extra robustness. So if it's 10, uh, say I need to hit him, say I need to hit him 10 times, okay? Stab him 10 times, and then the bleed activates. The next time to bleed them will be 15. They gain 50% additional bleed re uh, robustness, which is bleed resistance, after the first bleed. If you manage to get that second bleed, then they will get an additional boost, and now it'll take twice as much blood loss buildup to activate the bleed on the boss or enemy. That is the cap, though. After they hit their double robustness, it will stay at double robustness for the rest of the fight. We are able to test this using the giant white dragon over at Fort Ferrith because it takes like eight bleed ticks in order to actually take him down and he has so much HP, the bleed ticks are the only thing that do damage to him. So using that method, we were able to confidently confirm that enemies gain 50% bleed resistance and then double bleed resistance on the second bleed. So that is how bleed works on, on PvE enemies. And other than that, it uses the exact same formula of blood loss buildup. The only difference for PvE enemies is you can't see their bar. You don't know what their robustness is. Like I said, we had theorized it, it's partially attached to how much HP they have, which is why that dragon over there takes an immense amount of hits to make him bleed. Uh, and weak enemies explode instantaneously when you hit them with a reasonable amount of bleed. But the enemies may have variance in a robustness. Uh, some enemies, I think, are actually immune to bleed. So there is a little bit of variance like that. But for any just normal enemy, you go up and you attack some random soldier guy. You attack some humanoid boss. You attack some, like, cave troll. They're all going to have the exact same system, and it's roughly going to scale. Their bleed is roughly going to scale based off their HP, how much, how much robustness that they have. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about bleed in this game. Um, there are Ashes of War that put bleed on your weapons if you're not familiar. Uh, you go to a grace and you apply those, and that's pretty much everything about bleed. Okay, so that's how the math works. That's the formula. You don't even need a formula. It's literally just your bleed buildup. It just gets added until it hits your robustness. That's it. So... Uh, but then, like I said, there were all those caveats or whatever, caveats, whatever the word is, 
and uh, little details that matter, though. Like, you lose 7 bleed buildup every second, and that's continuous. Even if you keep on getting hit by bleed attacks, that doesn't change. Uh, Seppuku adds 80 bleed buildup per swing. You know, there's just all that. So, that's how bleed works. That's the real math. Those are the real numbers. We sat here and tested it for multiple hours and did multiple methods in order to confirm it. Like I said, we were, took videos. We, um, even in that video editor, I guess I didn't quite explain, but we, we took a video, we took a screenshot of where the bleed started, we took a screenshot of the last frame where the bleed ended, we took, you know, how long did it take for that time to pass, and then we knew the bleed of the weapon, and we were able to calculate, and so everything we did here is based on hard math and calculations. And I am 100% confident at this point in everything that I have told you. We did extensive testing, double-checked, triple-checked our math, and as far as I can tell, that, all of that is exactly how bleed works in PvE and PvP in Elden Ring.